feel like I'm blocking most of the action. As you can see, it's now soldered and connected. I need a shop but anyway it turns out I got it right on the first try and I was incredibly lucky because I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to um take apart my uh controller plug and uh switch around the pins on there to get it spinning in the right direction because you can get the phase wires mixed up there's three wires going to the motor there's a yellow which is basically like your ground that one stays the same and then there's your blue and your green or whichever colors that you want to coat them in um I most commonly see them in blue and green and um, if you get those backwards, um, if you put the green on the blue, it goes in reverse, full speed, like there's nothing wrong. And if you put the green on the blue, wait, if you do it the right way, it goes the right way. Um, paint it with some um, liquid electrical tape, and then I'm going to wrap it with some um, electrical tape. And then I'm probably going to, um, um, I couldn't fit any heat shrink over it. Well, I do have an outside heat shrink, but that's for all the wires together. I'm going to put like three layers of protection on the soldering parts, you know. This is no longer a 9C2807. This is a Marshall 2807. Um, my back hurts. Not illegal. Um, let's go ahead and put this here. I need to get my own. Ouch! Twist test. Hey, zip ties, not twist ties. I don't know why I keep calling them twist ties. Zip ties, man. Oh! Whoa! I was looking for that. I had a false panel in the back to hide the cables to make it a little neater. But, um, yeah. Uh, Time for the liquid tape. Ouch.
All right, guys. So, quick recap. Ugh, that took a little longer than I wanted it to. Um, this right here is the length of cable that I've cut and shortened um, between the motor and the controller. Um, basically, what this means is that the electricity that was lost heating this, well, traveling through this amount of wire, which isn't that much, really. I mean, it's about a foot, maybe, actually, no, it's about two feet. That's two feet of wire right there. So two feet of 10 gauge wire probably drops you about maybe 0.8 of a volt at maybe 100 amps, 150 amps or so. But what that means is you get that much more torque when you're pulling that from your batteries because it's not lost in heating this wire. And it's also more efficient because you're not wasting energy just heating wires, just going straight from the, the controller to the motor. In theory, um, how much difference I'll actually feel or how much difference is actually gained in, in range and um, efficiency is probably much less noticeable while you're riding the bike, but a little more noticeable in the numbers. Uh, you also gain a, little, gain a little top speed when you're opening it full throttle. Um, because what happens is when you're pulling it full throttle, all the current that's going through it is slowly heating up the wire and you're losing a little bit of that voltage as it's getting as it's traveling through each foot of this wire. About 0.35 volts are lost every foot of 10 gauge wire that you travel through. So if I've cut two feet of 10 gauge wire, we've gained a good 0.7 of a volt. And that's that's noticeable on the top speed because a volt Voltage determines your RPM of your hub motor, so every volt that you uh, gain, you can see even higher top speed. So let's see if we can maintain 35 on the 48 volt uh, system, which is would be incredibly efficient and uh, pretty impressive, I would say.